We're here with athletic director from Yaleville Summit, Coach Steve Jones. Coach, what a ball game. Oh, that was exciting. You know, uh, <laughs> we were over there watching it, and, and the crowd's going nuts. And, and uh, you know, it's, a, it's back and forth a little bit, and then two points and close. And we thought, what's going to happen here at the end? And I was thinking to myself, you know, the NCAA has March Madness. We have February Frenzy. That's exactly, <laughs> February that's Frenzy, that's you're exactly right. exactly what that was down Absolutely there. right. Boy, you, your girls came to play tonight. They they went out in a big lead. They were way behind, took the lead, didn't let it go till right there at the end. And, oh, my goodness, what a – you know, I would say make your hair turn gray, but it's well, already there. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I, it's starting to turn loose now. That's now it's the, turning – I'd yeah, rather turn, mine turn gray than turn it, it loose. Turned gray now, it's turning loose. So, and it's because of stuff like this right here. But what a victory, and what a so proud of our girls. They've, uh, I don't know our exact record, but it's something to the effect of 17 and five or something over the year. You know, they've just done really well, and uh, we just love watching them. Hang out right here. We'll do you next. What about these Yellville Summit boys? These Panther boys. You moved up your ninth graders to play with your varsity team. That's correct. And you had one that was a total asset to your team last night. Yes. Uh, and I, well, I want to go on record and say this, that last night was a team effort. When you look at the at the score, you know, we had one kid with 16, one with 14, one with 13, one with 12. And everybody pitched in. They just played relentless defense last night. And that's what I'm the most proud of. That's the first high school game I've seen this year where they scored 70-something points. Yes. I mean, that, that's remarkable. And these guys, they, they don't let up. They're just getting it and putting it on. Uh, they, and, and their record wasn't very good to come in here. No. Uh, we were something like 2-17 and 17 coming in. Yeah, but you pulled off an upset against a very good team last yeah. night. and We've won two in a row in the, in the district tournament. You know, so, it, it, so that's exciting. It is. And, you know, anything can happen. Again, it's not March Madness, but it's frenzied February. February frenzy it's in flipping Arkansas. February frenzy in flipping Arkansas. Anything can happen, and uh, you know if, if our boys advance, and you you end up with uh, Yellville versus Flipping finals or semifinals, you want to see a show. It, this place will be rocking. It's going to be noisy. Yes, it is. And I'm going to miss Thursday night. I've got to go down and watch Mountain Home wrestle in the state tournament down there, but uh, I'll well, be here Friday night for sure. We'll let that slide this time, Coach Jones. We appreciate you taking the time to come visit with us. We're going to get uh, Mr. Wes Henderson coming here and visit with us now. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you. See you Friday morning. Now with me, I've got Mr. Wes Anderson, the superintendent of schools over here at Yaleville Summit. What do you think of that ball game? I, I thought it was a little closer than I cared for it to be. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like last night's boys game. That exactly, was Exactly. I was ready to relax a long time into that game, and it just never happened. It was, uh, you know, when we were talking to Coach Jones, I told him, I said, you know, I didn't think their boys record was very good coming in here, but they played like a good season, well-oiled machine, and last night pulled off an overtime victory against a very good team. Well, they sure did, and. You know what, it's great at this time of year to have won two in a row when you've had a kind of a tough year leading up to now, but they're getting better, and this is truth is this time of the year you want to be good. You know, and the season record that you have really doesn't matter. It's how you do right here in this tournament, and these boys are doing all they can. There would be nothing in the world exciting me more than watch these boys win several ball games here at the end when people had kind of – uh, held up not real high hopes for them, and now you look at how hard they play and what a great bunch of kids they are. You know, let's talk about that girls game that we just watched a little bit. You know, there is a bunch of underclassmen, very good athletes on that team. Uh, absolutely, and there's, well, there's more of them that didn't get into the game that are basically just about as good as some of them that are in there. Is it, that right? It's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be an exciting team, well, for the rest of this year and next year, so we're excited about it. Well, you know, Mr. Henderson, I'm not uh, – you know me and have known me a long time. You know I'm not a big basketball guy, but I'm, I'm glad that David and Joey asked me to come over here and, and give them a hand with this tonight and this week in general uh, because I've seen some good basketball and I've learned a lot and I enjoy it. Bob, we're ecstatic to have you over here, and we appreciate you all doing this for us. It's truth is anytime you get kids on a screen, they're happy, and uh, you got kids doing great things. There's no difference in – basketball than there is math and science you know uh you know what we're wanting to get better at everything they do you know i was telling david earlier i said when i do my 
football play-by-play during the junior high and the seventh grade and the JV games and even during the Friday night broadcast. My point is I want to get as many names mentioned as possible because this recognition may be the only recognition they get. You, you are exactly right. You, well, shoot, Bob, you saw me when my boys were playing over there, how, <laughs> how passionate I'd get about watching them, and, and I really didn't care whether they're any good or not. I cared how hard they played. Absolutely right. Mr. Henderson, we're down to one minute. We All need right. to get these mics back over to the guys' Thanks, account. Guys. So you have a great Thank day. you, Thanks sir. Appreciate your time. Right. Goodbye, now. Bob, here we go. Final game here tonight. We've had some good ones. It's been a lot of fun to this point. I don't see it ending anytime soon. Well, here comes the starting lineup for Yellville Summit, Mason Spence. Of course, Yellville had a great game last night. Ended up getting the victory 76 to 75 in overtime. As Robert Howe. 13, Dawson Dillard. And then Dawson Dillard. Remember, Kyder. Kyder. Did, did I pronounce that right? <laughs> you did. All right. Kiter. We're rocking. We're off to a good start. Yeah, we got called out by Anna Cantrell last night. And we were ready tonight, though. As we got Leopard fans online, Hannah Morris saying, let's go Leopards. Number one, Brandon Adams for the Leopards. Cody Block, number 11. Number 13, Landon Savage. Number 21, Colby Hicks. Number 24, Kent Bruce. Number 24, Kent Bruce. We're in for a good ball game right here, I can tell it already. Yeah, this is going to be a good game. Of course, Yellville last night hit 16 threes, which really helped make the difference. And, of course, this crowd's still buzzing from that game. Went down to the final 1.4 seconds to go. Yellville survives, go on, goes on to the next round. <laughs> it amazes me that the coaches for the girls are the same coaches for the boys. It just it, it amazes me that they can play to the level that they play and do both sides. Yeah, it's uh, part of small school basketball is... Uh, Leopards get the ball. As Alpina wins the opening tip. Blocked Adams. And these guys setting up. They're going to go inside right away. Nice turnaround. That's number 24, Kent Bruce. He gets it for two. So Alpina strikes first. Of course, last night, uh, Yelvo got a lot of help from their ninth graders. Made some good plays. Well, they, they throw it away. It's picked up by number 21, Colby Hicks. And Dillard tried to force that one in. Nice play by Hicks. They go back inside again. 24, he can't get the shot off. That's played by Purdom. Dillard. Looks to take it coast to coast. Hits the hard shot. Ties it up. One minute in, we're tied up at two. Adams with the ball across the half court. Well, you know, you mentioned about the same coach. Doing, that's got to be tough. You know, you have the emotional adrenaline flowing. Number 11 with a three-point shot. That's Kobe Block. From Cody the- Block. You know, if you got that emotional adrenaline from the game that you just played, and it's like, hey, you got to play another one right after. Spins for three. Shots long. He doesn't get the rebound. Here comes Alpina. Adams with the ball. Three-second violation on Alpina. Turnover to Yeoville. Kiter with the ball. Drives it across. They're going to get Kiter with the carry. 
So going to go back now to Alpina. Of course, one thing, too, a lot of these teams, they play each other multiple times during the regular season, so they're very familiar with each other. So most of these games, if you notice, you know, usually very slow starts, and then we'll pick up. Just like that girls game? Yeah. <laughs> Yellville's ball. That's number 11, Howell. Howell to 22, Purdom. Purdom to Kiter. Kiter puts it up. It rolls out. I think that ball touched every part of the rim but didn't go down. This is 21, Hicks. Throws it to the corner to number one, Adams. Three-point shot's good. So Adams with the three. So Alpina with a couple threes early, jumps out to an eight to two lead in here in the opening minutes. Of course, the uh, winner of this game will be taking on the number one seed, Eureka Springs, in the semifinals. Three-point shot from Purdom. Shot's long. Dillard hustles it down. Stops, pops. Shot is long. It's going to be off of Alpena and stay with Yelville. Of course, I want to give a quick shout-out. I mentioned earlier the earlier Alpena game that we did. Purdom goes up. Shot's no good. Rebound by Alpena. Leopard Sports Media, they do a great job for uh, Alpena. Drives in, buckets good, and the going to have a foul, so a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line is number 21, Colby Hicks. It's an eight-point ball game, 10 to two in favor of the Leopards. Hicks sinks the free throw, and now it's 11 to two here in the first. Kyder to Dillard. Dillard to Howell. Stolen away. Number 21, Hicks. Hicks drives it in, draws the foul. Foul on number 11, Robert Howell. It's his first. Team second. Going to the line is number 21, Colby Hicks. Hicks' shot is up and good. It's a 10-point ball game. Shots up and good, 11 point game. 4.30 left in the first period. Alpina has just come out very aggressive here in this first quarter. As Alpina's ball, gonna be inbound by number 13, Landon Savage. Tried to get it down low to Hickerson, but off his fingertips out of bounds. Hicks with the ball, tries to make the shot, does not. Gets his own rebound, stays with the Leopards. Of course, Lifeway won the first game tonight. Now they're going to take on flipping tomorrow at 4 o'clock in our first game. Uh, Yellville Eureka Springs with Yellville getting that one-point victory. They're going to take on Cotter in a rematch of a game we just did on Saturday. That should be a good one. Those two games are on Thursday, correct? Yeah, going to be on Thursday starting at 4 o'clock. Three-point shot from the corner. Braley, of course, hit a couple threes yesterday. With Cotter defeating Decatur, they're going to be taking on Flippin, senior boys action. No oh boy. At 8.30, that's going to be our final game on Thursday night. That one's going to be a slobber knocker. And then, of course, the winner of this one takes on the number one seed, Eureka Springs, at 5.30. Has uh, got some big matchups coming up. On the Twin Lakes Sports Network on Thursday night. Hicks. Locked to Hicks. Hicks has got it. He's a little hot. 13-point game. 
Right now, Hicks, you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. He's doing a great job. Big three-point shot by number 22, Trenton Purdom. Ten-point game, timeout on the court. Yeovil needed that shot. Momentum really on Alpina here in the opening minutes. As a timeout on the floor, 3.20 left here in the first quarter. It's Alpina 15, Yellville 5. And uh, Bob, go ahead and share a little bit more about uh, XL7. I tried to share it last time in the internet. I'll let you do went it. Went down on I don't us. like talking about my own stuff. So, uh, of course, <laughs> XL7 Sports, uh, it's with Bob Rechtenwald. Go and check them out on Facebook. Uh, they cover local teams. Also, I know you have a coaches show where you interview different coaches and we all do sorts that of different on people Friday that come morning. in. Yes, sir, we do that on Friday morning. This is not limited to just North Central Arkansas or any area around Mountain Home. It's within the whole XL7 TV viewing area, which is about 380,000 people and ranges all the way from Branson to Harrison to Marshall up into Missouri. So we try to do it all. Now, I do want to throw a shout-out to the fans. Tonight we went over 4,050 followers, so uh, – and you went over your 200th broadcast. Yeah, we had our 200th, uh, our first Alpena game. Unfortunately, the Alpena fans probably Rayleigh shot from up for good number 10, Rayleigh. Hunter Rayleigh with a nice shot. Rayleigh picking up where he left off last night. But, uh, yeah, the 200th, we had a little technical difficulty during the third quarter. But uh, we survived through it and appreciate all the fans tuning in and helping us hit a milestone. Appreciate XL7 Sports for uh, putting that together a little surprise for us at uh, halftime of one of these games. Kyder brings it across half court. Throw. It's going to stay with Yeovil. That was a little touchy. It's right now 15 to 8 here in the first quarter. Rayleigh with the ball back to Kyder. Kyder to Pernum. Burden to Rayleigh. Rayleigh puts it up for three. Hits the rim, no good. On Rayleigh's shot, he's got such good rotation on it. Just shot that one a little hard. But Alpina, I tell you what, they're just being aggressive, taking it to the hole. Foul on number 21, Camden Norberg. Team foul number four. That's Norberg's first. First shot's no good. Second shot's no good. Over the back. That was a good job by Purdom and Norberg getting position, and Alpina with the foul. Foul on number 21, Colby Hicks. It's his first, team first. Timeout on the floor. Real quick, we got a couple of fans giving some shout outs. So uh, we got Hannah Moore saying, let's go Leopards. Uh, Christina Campbell said, good shot, Adams. Tegan Ferrister, let's go Yellville. You got this. Hey, Joey Shaw. Uh, oh, you actually put that in there. Joey Shaw giving a comment. Hello, Ky Kylie Shaw. So uh, we want to know where did you take her for, thanks for uh, Valentine's dinner? Yeah, what was the valent what was the Valentine's dinner? Well, Joey, on the next time out, we need to zoom in the concession stand. Um, I don't have the handheld mic anymore, so I can't do the old interview in the concession stand, but <laughs> Catter with the ball across half court. Gets it over to Rayleigh. Rayleigh puts it up for three. Passes it. No good. Puts it back up. Foul on the play. Uh, Rayleigh, I think that was actually a design pass that Yellville runs going back door where it looks like a shot, but it's actually a lob. Yellville's had quite a bit of success with that. Foul on number 24, Kent Bruce. It's his first, team second. And at the line for Yeovil is number 21, Camden Norberg. First shot's no good. Seven-point game. 157 left in the first period. Norberg misses the second one, but they track it down. They're going to get it over to Rayleigh, the ninth grader. Who he's really helped their outside game. Over to Purdom for three. 
Close, but no banana. And a strong rebound there by Alpina. Of course, tomorrow night, no games tomorrow night, but we will be back. And those fans tuning in, guys, hey, hit that follow button, hit that like button, so that way when we go live Thursday, you'll get a notification. Shot's no good. Ball's going to belong to Yellville. So Yellville playing a little bit better defensively the last several possessions. Just need to get their shots down. And starting to try to see if they can claw their way back into this game. They're down by seven, 15 to eight. Rayleigh to Kyder. Kyder back to Rayleigh. Looks like they're gonna call that number 11. Foul on number 11, that's Cody, Cody Block. His first, team's third. So they're talking about Joey's dinner last night on our Facebook. Uh, we'll have to share that. As Norberg again draws the foul. Good play. So apparently Courtney Jackson at work today, she could smell the leftovers from uh, Joey's dinner last night. She said they smelled wonderful. They looked delicious. And, uh, hey, she gave us a shout-out, too. Congratulations on us hitting 200 games. So thanks for all we do. Now, she's one of that infamous sign crowd. You know, we, we had a little uh, – uh, a fad going on over here, Bob, for a little bit where all the different schools would have different signs posted for us each game. Okay. It'd be, you know, hello, TLSN. They'd always, you know, and it, all the schools we were going to had all these signs. Uh, ended up AAA. Someone complained, and AAA's like, you can't have signs like that at ball games. So uh, they removed our, our TLSN signs, but Courtney Jackson was one of the TLSN sign fans. So shout out to her. But that was fun. We had we had about a two month period where uh, uh, all the different uh, the students and everything they, they were seeing who could have the most inventive sign. Foul on number one, Mason Spence, his first, team's fifth. Well, Courtney, uh, thank you so much for the uh, shout out. I wonder why you can't have signs. Three point shots, good. Yeah, Courtney online says we got to follow we uh, we got to follow Triple A, but we still love TLSN. So. Thanks, Courtney. Steal on the play. Great ball movement by Alpina. Up and in, 11 point game. Yellville got within nine, but then a couple buckets. Big rejection at the buzzer. That's the end of the first period. Leopards 20, Panthers nine. So again, we want to say thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in for tonight's broadcast here at the uh, 2A Region 1 District Basketball Tournament right here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network. Of course, we will be back Thursday night. Uh, this is game number eight in the last two days. We'll be back on Thursday night with all the semifinal matchups and then, of course, the finals which uh, we got some big matchups set up for Thursday night. You're going to have some tough games Thursday night. We're going to have some, uh, dare I say, there'll be some slobber knockers is what I like to call them. That's our, uh, our Marion County, uh, Western uh, Baxter County lingo. So it should be some, it should be some great matchups. As Joey over here, he had to take his shoes off. He's exhausted. Your shoes, Joey's shoes kind of stink a little bit, so. It's suffering from dementia, is it? As anyone that walks behind our little booth here, and if they smell something, it's not me. It's, it's not the brisket. Yeah, it's not the brisket. Which, again, great uh, great setup with food here at Flippin. Purdom to Kyder. To the Kyder back to Purdom. Rayleigh. Out to Spence. Out to Kyder. Puts it up, rejected. Big play there by Hicks. He said, get that one out of here. Yeah. 
As they tried to get it inside, but pass out of bounds. Going to be a turnover. Right now, Bob, I think these next couple minutes are going to be important because Alpina is starting to get some momentum. <clears throat> and uh, Yevla's going to need some defensive stops here, or this could, uh, this could be hard for them to come back from. Adams with the ball. Over to 12. Savage to 13. Beautiful shot. 14-point game. 6.50 left in the second quarter. Heard him shot no good. Hicks just skies. Play's broken up at number one, Spence. It's just the physical size right now for Alpina. Allowing them to take it in. 16 point game. Over to Purdom, tries to get it to Kyder, knocked away. Nice give and go, bucket is good. Timeout on the floor. Yellville takes it. So we got 6.05 left here in the second quarter. It's Alpena 27, Yellville 9, right here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network. Do have a couple shout outs. We got Jake, uh, Jake Yacking says, Go Panthers. Also, Sherry Kyer says, Let's go Panthers. Vicki Parks, of course, Vicki always tunes into our broadcast. She says, Let's go Panthers. And I know she's one of our top fans online. But uh, Alpina just rolling. Yellville needing to see if they can make some adjustments. Of course, the uh, winner of this game gets one of the uh, better teams in the state. Uh, Eureka Springs, the senior boys squad, they're a good one. Six minutes left in the first half. Yellville's down by 18 points. They need to get some offense going, but it's kind of hard to do when you got number 21 breaking up every play they try. He puts it in for two, 20-point game. Hicks right now just looking like a man among boys out there having a huge first half. Three-point shot from Spence is off. Last night, Yellville, of course, 16 threes, just having trouble getting the range from outside in this one. Inside five in the first half. It's a 20-point game. Comes up short on the three. Had a little too much time to shoot that one. And shot goes short, so Yellville gets the jump ball. I'm sorry, Alpina's, uh, Alpina's gonna get the possession. Point shot from outside, long Hicks and Purdom battling for it. Like Yellville the gets Hicks. the ball. 4-14 left in the first half. Three! Purdom with the big three and Yellville needed that to Try to get something going on offense. 
Still a long way to go, second quarter, but Alpina Three right now. Three answers it right back. Alpina just feeling it on offense. That was number 13, Savage, on that three-point shot. Still a 20-point game. Heard him back to 14. Looks like it's going to be a kickball, so it's going to stay with Yellville. Three thirty-four to go here in the second quarter. Shots off. Tolliver into the ball game. Savage, Landon Savage is out. Hicks over to Adams. Adams walked a half a mile on that one. No call on the play, and ball's going to go back to Yellville. We got a foul. Foul on number one, Brendan Adams. His first, team's fifth. So with 3.18 to go, if you're Yellville, you want to try to at least see if it's possible to get this down to around the 10-point mark going into the second half, trying to get a little bit of momentum going. Yeah, nobody likes to come out of the halftime with a 20-point deficit. Foul on number 14. That's his first, team's fifth. Ball movement by Alpina is now Hicks. He's double teamed. So good job by Yellville stepping out to stop that play. Drive to the inside. Good play Yellville's by ball. Yellville. That's Kider stepping in front, taking the charge. Foul on block number 11. That's his second. Should be team seventh, and it is. And Howell's now checked back in the game for Yellville. Pass almost stolen. They try to get it down low. Nice play. Two-point shot by number 23. Hickerson. And that pulls it back to 18 with Hicks bringing it down. Hicks drives, slices in. They're going to get him with the walk, so back-to-back -back turnovers. And Yellow seeing if they can get a little run to finish the first half. And now down 18, still got a long way to go. Two minutes left in the first half. Out to Kiter. Puts it up. In for three. 15-point game. Back-to-back -back buckets is exactly what Yellville needed. They got it down to 15. But Alpina Basket's answers good. right back. That's number 12 going to the line. Tuck Savage. Foul was on number 10, Hunter Rayleigh. That's his first. Now trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play here. Team six, they've got the fouls backwards. Loose ball. Spence comes away with it. No 34-17. Kyder in the corner. Again. Oh, and he walks with it. So he shuffled his feet when he caught the ball. 140. This is a 17-point game. 34-17. to 17. Leopards. Nice play there by Yovo, knocking it out of bounds from Hicks. So 
So Alpina has possession. 1.30 to go. 17-point game. Good offensive first half for Alpina. Especially number 21 Hicks as she takes it in again. Leaves it short. Got good penetration, just couldn't finish the shot. Leopards keep possession. Into number 11, back to number one. Savage going to throw it in. Steps out of bounds. Yelville's going to have the ball with 111. So now here comes Yelville back. 34 17. Going to need a couple buckets here. And instead, they turn Big it take over. Takeaway. Missed shot. Rebound, Yelville. Silent number 12, Tuck Savage, his first, team's eighth. That's going to send him to the line. So how going to go to the line right now, down 17. Is Joey Shaw, poor Joey Shaw on his feet. He's over here. He, I could just tell Joey's hurt and the dogs are barking. Shots no good. Rebound, Yeoville. Over to 14. It's stolen, stolen away by, by number 21. Hicks lays it up and in. 19-point game with 40 seconds left in the first half. Hicks making that one look easy. Great play. Tries to get it to Keemer. Keemer's pass is stolen. And now here comes Alpina back. Knocked nice away steal. by Keemer. Hicks is rejected. Big time block from Hicks. As he got that one clean. And it's the Leopards subbing in right now. 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Yellow's got the ball. They go to Purdom. Purdom from the corner. Sinks the three. 16 point ball game. And that's the end of the first half. Leopards 36, Panthers 20. That's the end of the first half of play. Guys, we'll be back in about 10 minutes right here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network.
Here we go. We're getting ready. Third quarter. It's a 16-point game in favor of the Alpena Leopards. Well, we got 16 minutes left, and Alpena just offensively really on a roll here in this uh, in this first half. As Joey, man, just brought some water. That's some cold water. That's some high-quality H2O, Joey. Walmart's best. Here we go. Flippin' throws it in to number 13, Dillard. Dillard Purdom over to Howell. Ball's taken away by number 21, Colby Hicks. Hicks, gets Hicks lays deal. it up. There it is. And he walks. A little bit of a travel. What's that old song, Walking to Memphis? He was on his way. Yeah, he was walking to Memphis. But uh, good play by Hicks. Just uh, unfortunately the travel, but good defensive play, making the steal. You know, he's playing a good heads-up ball game tonight. You can't take nothing away from his game at all. That's that number 21, Colby Hicks. Shots up and good, three points, 39 to 20. So now Yoville has pulled back within 13. 36 to 23. Just like when it looked like it was starting to uh, get a little out of hand, but Yoville's definitely picked up the intensity on defense. And still got a long way to go here starting the third quarter. 13-point game. Hicks is going to throw it in. And we just got to notice the legendary Maggie Davenport is uh, is watching our game. So, shout out to Maggie D. Yeah, we get an announcement when Maggie D joins. She brings the party. Three-pointers up and in. It's a 16-point game. Leopards ahead. Maggie Davenport doesn't bring the party. She is the party, Joey. Purdom with the ball, passes it over to Spence. Back to Purdom. Into the corner to Kiter. Out to number 11. Comes up short. Of course, uh, Hannah Morris, she gave the Leopards. She said, keep up the good work, Leopards. Christina Campbell, let's go, Leopards. So all the fans tuning in, guys, let us know who you're cheering for. You're cheering for the Leopards or the Panthers. As we're coming down the stretch, six minutes left here in the third. Still plenty of time, but Yellow's going to have to go quick. Hicks' his shot is off the mark. <laughs> Foul on number 22, Trenton Purdom. It's his first, team's first. And at the line, I believe it's number 11, isn't it? Yep, and he hits the first one. Cody Block. Makes the first shot. It's 40 to 23. Makes them both 41 23. Also, tonight, quick recap we had Lifeway won our opening contest. Then Cotter uh, came back and won the second contest. Yellville Summit girls in a squeaker take the one point victory. Loose ball going to stay with. Stay with the Panthers. With the Panthers. Cross court pass is stolen. Put back is good by Hicks. As I thought, Hicks might give it a chance, uh, a dunk attempt. Oh, beautiful save by the Leopards. This Leopard group, group over here is playing a great game, defensively and offensively. Number 11, Robert Howell with the ball. Heard him, puts it up for three. No good. Rebound, Spence. No good. Hicks with the beautiful pass and 
Nice play by Yelville Dillard taking the offensive charge. Dillard. Foul on number 13, Landon Savage, his first, team's first. Dillard not afraid to step in front and sacrifice his body. Heard him from the corner. Off the rim. Rebound by number 24, Kent Bruce. wonder how the Razorbacks are doing. Actually, I've been trying to stay <laughs> off social media because I don't want to know, but I can't take it anymore. I got to look. Shots up and good. 22-point game. So Alpina, slow, I mean, Yovo got it down to 12, but now just a 10 to nothing run. As uh, right now, Arkansas is up uh, for an update. Number 23, Arkansas, 55, Missouri, 37. They're up 18 points. There we go. So, uh, Musselman probably won't lose his shirt tonight, but but uh, def I know he'd definitely take a victory. Still 13 minutes, one second left here in the second quarter. And for anyone watching online, if I just spoiled it for you guys, I'm sorry. My bad. Nah, he ain't that sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to know. I couldn't take it. Shots up, no good. Shots up and good. 24-point nice. 20, game. 3.45 left in the third. Good layup. Timeout, Yelville. Good layup by Alpina. Yelville with a timeout. But, uh, of course, it's been a fun night of basketball, and we'll be back. Uh, of course, those people tuning in, remember, watch your uh, – just uh, follow us on Facebook. We'll post our game coverage for Thursday. Right now we're planning on doing all the games. So be sure to kind of check that out right here in the TLSN. Of course, it's been a fun day here at the uh, 2A Region 1 District Basketball Tournament live here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network. And remember, semifinal games will be covered here and then uh, as well as the championship on Friday night, which uh, right now the way the brackets are lining up, we're going to have some big matchups as we still have a Yellville with our local teams that we normally cover, we still have a Yellville team left. Both flipping teams are still in it. Also, both Cotter teams are still alive. So, and Yellville, if they're going to stay alive, they're going to have to get hot from outside. Yeah, they're going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. <clears throat> as the Sands in the hourglass are running out on the Yellville Summit Panthers right now with 3.43 to go. You know, it was back and forth quite a bit last night. They fell down quite hard, and they came back to win it. But tonight, they're a little bit in, in a deeper hole than they've been. They get it to Rayleigh. Rayleigh, of course, had a big night last night. They've really been putting some pressure on him and keeping an eye on him tonight. And they throw it away. He tried to get it into Norberg. Passed a little too hot to handle. Tegan Ferriser says, how do I watch the Thursday game if I'm playing in it? Well, well, you watch it when you get done. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're watching the Thursday game while you're playing in it and you get busted by the coach, is hits, hits hard and is holding his knee. That's a player they don't want to lose. That's Hicks' second foul, team second foul. As Hicks is, uh, looks like he's walking it off and he's going to be okay, but man, he. Uh, he took a swallow. Yeah, he grimaced. Rayleigh really puts it up for three. No good. Foul on Norberg. It's his second, team second. Yeah. 
Shots up and in. And that extends it now. 27 point lead for Alpina Time out, over Alpina. Yelville. 20, 26 point. Uh, 27 point, or I'm sorry, I had 50. It's actually 49, so I'm a point off. Yeah, 26 point lead, 49 to 23. With uh, three minutes left here in the third quarter. Of course, I uh, want to shout out one of our new sponsors, the Pharmacy at Flippin' Station. Check them out at Facebook at Flippin' Station or online, www.flippinstation.com. In the old Sodies building, right across the street from here, they're going to be opening soon, so uh, check them out. I know they're uh, posting a lot of updates on their digital signage out front. So. Go see Shane Gardner, good guy. We we did business with him down in Melbourne. Uh, pretty good fellow. <laughs> Panthers need a big break right here, David, to make something happen. They've got to get some points on the board. Well, Hurt them up for three. They're going to have to go crazy from outside. They hit 16 threes last night, but have struggled tonight from the three-point line. They're falling short bad tonight. And uh, Alpina. 26-point game. Two minutes left in the third. Two more. 28-point game. And we got a player down on the floor. I di didn't see what happened over there. Neither. So I, I didn't see exactly what happened. Hopefully the player not, not able to see a number on that either. Looks like he's getting up and okay, so that's good. He's being helped off the floor. He's not I, putting any weight on that leg. No, he's not. They're getting him to the bench. I couldn't see the number right now. Is that number one? Mm-hmm. So what, that's Adams? Brendan Adams. So hopefully he's okay. I didn't see what happened over there. Kind of away from the play. Mm. Here goes Hicks. <clears throat> you better watch, you might end up on a poster. But good play by Yelville. That's Dillard again. As Dillard step in front, he's definitely sacrificing his body tonight. That's Hicks' third foul, team's third. 133 left in the third period. Of course, 20, 30, 28-point game. 30-point lead will be the mercy rule and will be a running clock. Pina looks like they're going to slow it down, run some offense. Right now, Eureka looking like they're going to go to the or semifinals. Or, or, I'm sorry, Alpina going to the semifinals to take on the number one seed, the Eureka. The Highlanders. Highlanders. Barring an incredible fourth quarter comeback, we're right now down 28 and... Two more points, going to make it a running clock in the fourth. Night two, been some good basketball tonight. Good play there by Yelville. Layup is in, good. 26 point game. Hicks for three. No good. That's the end of the third period. 26-point game, 51 for the Alpena Leopards, 25 for the Yellville Summit Panthers, and that's the end of the third. So we're getting ready to go to the fourth. We'll step away for a minute and be right back here at TLSN.
Here we go. Start the fourth. 26-point game. Foul on Kyder. That's his first. Team's third. Both teams still playing hard despite the score. Yellville, Coach Hunter Sims, he'll have his team playing hard until the very last second. Kobe Hicks with the basket. Back to a 28-point lead. Hicks with a monster game tonight. Is Dillard. Foul on number 11, Cody Block. It's his third, team's fourth. Spins for three. And it's good. He nails it. 53 to 28. Nice play by Spence, stepping in front. Of course, a uh, shout out to all the uh, all the different schools as we're coming to the end of our basketball season coverage. Of course, Yellville, well, you got a chance to visit with uh, Steve Jones and Wes Henderson. Uh, they've been very, always very, been very generous over there with the setup and their tech department working with us on the internet. Always does a great job and. Uh, then here at Flippin' as well, Kelvin Hudson in this group, and then, of course, uh, Coach Jared Jefferson over at Cotter. Good play by Kyder. That's, that's Hicks' fourth foul, David. Team's fifth. Yeah, it's always good to visit with Coach Jones and Mr. Mr. Anderson. Shot is long from the corner, but fouled on the play. So it looks like we're going to get three free throws. Foul on number 12, Savage. It's his second. Team sixth. Well, this is a good learning experience. You know, this uh, Yellville Summit group, very young group. Uh, you know, Coach Hunter Sims is using this as a, uh, you know, something that they can learn from, and he's still coaching until the very end of the game despite the score. So, But uh, great performance tonight by Alpina as, uh, you know, they're looking like they're going to advance to the next round. Well, Yellville's got three seniors on their team. And uh, a lot of a lot of junior high players playing up tonight. So it should, should be some good matchups uh, down the road. Of course, uh, there's going to be some conference changes next year, and then, Bob, as you've kind of mentioned, you know, we've talked a little bit briefly, the shot clock. That's next gonna make year, a big difference in all the leagues in Arkansas because when they go to that, I think it's 35 seconds. Uh, Mountain Home played in a tournament and they ran the whole tournament with the shot clock, and not a single team had been used to using the shot clock. So how what did that look like over Ugly. There? <laughs> Plain and simple, it was ugly for everybody. And uh, so that's gonna come into effect next year and it's gonna it's going to make that toss around, that keep away. It's not going to be able to – they're not going to be able to play that way. Yeah, if you got a lead and you're up, you know, six points with two minutes to go and you normally play keep away, now you're going to still have to, you're going to, have to shoot. run your offense. Mm -hmm. Shots up and good. It's 29 points for the Panthers. Shots good by Mason Spence, number one. So Spence pulls it now to 24 points. Of course, getting three attempts, fouled on the three-point attempt. We got Lucille Bailey says, go Leopards. Uh, Renee Theme says, good job, Noah Layton, number 14. So Hannah Morris, keep up the good work, Leopards. 23-point game. It's 53 to 30. Good Number two ends play. up with the ball. Teal over to Kiter. Comes back out to Spence. Puts it up for three. No good. Rebound Hicks. Well, to finish up your season, too, you want to finish it on a positive note. 
So to play hard these last six minutes for Yellville, down 23 points. And we got Eddie uh, Johnson online saying, go Leopards. Tegan Ferrister wants to know for broadcasting regionals. Actually, uh, our, our, turner, our basketball coverage will end at district this week, so we will not be broadcasting regionals. Triple-A kind of takes control of them from there, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah, Joey, Joey hit the nail on the head. You got to pay big bucks. I think last year when we looked, I think it was like 250 just for the regionals per game. And uh, yeah. yeah, I know when we do the uh, football playoffs from the first game to the finals, it's extra money. And you can't even do the finals. No, I guarantee it would be a pay-per-view for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, streaming groups that have popped up, they do pay-per-views. And, you know, as long as we get local businesses that can kept, help cover our expenses and things like that, that's all we do. You know, we're not doing it to make money. It's ain't our day job. But, you yeah, know, there's a lot of them that uh, they get pretty uh, testy on those uh, pay-per-views. We've run into a couple of them here in a few of the tournaments. And uh, Fouls on number 24, Bruce. It's his third, team seventh. Kyder is at the line. Which that stinks as a fan. I mean, you know, they're, when they're having to pay. And a lot of times they'll, you got to watch it because they'll put a subscription fee and then all of a sudden you'll start getting hit with a monthly charge. And you're like, I'm just trying to watch this high school game, man. Yeah, well, I only just want to watch one game. But uh, that's where, you know, people like, you know, XL7, also Twin Lake Sports Network, you know, we don't charge people to, to watch them. So. Back up to a 26-point lead. Just a little weak on that three-point shot. Yeah, Kyder hit the bottom, you know, nothing but the bottom of the net, but unfortunately it went, didn't go through the top. Yeah, that's right. As they go to Hicks, Keemer's going to stay on and make him work for it. As Hicks, he was wanting to get a dunk. If Keemer wouldn't have been there, I bet you he would have given it a shot. 28-point game with 5.30 left in the ball game. Still good crowd that's come out to watch these Yellow Summit Panther boys and girls. In for three. As, uh, I think they're trying to get <laughs> – they're trying to get a dunk for Hicks, but uh, – Number four, Keemer's uh, playing back. And they call it on Spence. His first, team six. He sinks it. 60 to 34. Sixty-one thirty-four. So Hicks again with another big, big game, and now getting ready to take on the number one seeded Eureka Springs. They're going to need Hicks at, to bring another big game with Eureka being one of the best teams in the state. And uh, Razorbacks right now up 13, 59 to 46 with 6.37 to go, so. Nice steal by number four. Misses the layup. Oh, that was a bad call. And so Arkansas right now on the road. Of course, 19 and six on the season. Just got back in the top 25. How many they have to win to play the NCAA tournament? They're, right now it says that they're a shoe in but they need to win a couple more um, coming down the stretch. I would say probably about three more games to finish out. Um, really getting to that 22-23 win plateau would assure them, but uh, unless they just you know, had a complete collapse, which we don't want to see that, really just a couple more wins, and they should be sitting pretty good. 63-34, 29-point game. Probably, if I was to guess, probably going to be a number eight or nine seed at this time. Might be able to get higher if they can uh, 
Are they through the meat of their NCAA? Are they through the meat of the SEC schedule? Still have. Uh, they still have uh, Kentucky and quite a few others. There's the icing. It's a 31-point game. So now running clock. As long as it's over 30. Three. Back to a 28-point game. Starting to break down just a lot of back and forth, uh, what I call you center ball. But, yeah, looking at uh, the Razorback schedule right now, I'm pulling it up and seeing what they have left on the stands. But you got to give a shout-out, though, that huge victory. I know they kind of fell off against Alabama, but that, that big victory against uh, Auburn, you know, from people I've talked to, they said that's uh, – that was one of the biggest wins, you know, the, the craziest that crowd's ever been over at Bud Walton. So right now they do have to play against number 16, Tennessee, Florida. Then they play number four, Kentucky, LSU. And then um, also they have another game against uh, Tennessee that is to be decided. I think that's going to be a makeup game. And then they'll have an SEC tournament. Yeah, and then there's the SEC tournament. But, I mean, that's a pretty tough – you're talking about, you know, three out of your yeah. last six we got games a hard finish coming up. Against a top 25 opponents. <clears throat> so, long haul to go. But it's one of those things, just take it a game at a time and. Nice pass. Bucket, Lucas good. McVeigh. It's right now both teams kind of empty in the bench, going to let a lot of players get an opportunity to play with a 27-point 20, lead. As they're still doing a running clock with it being, with it being such a wide discrepancy. But a fun night of basketball, night two. And thank you guys, everyone, for joining us. Throws it away. That one ends up in the stands. Inside two minutes. The gymnasium will get a night off tomorrow night. Do a little floor cleaning, I'm sure. And they'll have this ready for four big matchups again on uh, Thursday night. Going to be right here. Right here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network. As uh, now... Arkansas has extended their lead. Now they're up 65-48, 4.19 to go. So they've hit a couple buckets, a couple threes, and getting a little bit of breathing room for Coach Eric Musselman's squad. Then it comes in. 26-point game inside a minute. Bay steps in front, gets the steal. Loses it to number 44. Which I got a feeling this last 30 seconds is going to be pretty exciting as these guys are in here. Seeing if they can make something happen, getting to play in a lot of them. This is their first district tournament. These will be the guys we'll be watching down the road in the future. 15 seconds. Point shots off, and Spence comes away with it. Yelville going to try to get a shot off here. McVeigh for three. Oh, off the rim, no good. And that's the all ball game, 26-point game. <clears throat> Leopard 66, Panthers 40. That's the end of the ball game. We'll see you Thursday night. I won't see you, but David and Joey will see you Thursday night. Gentlemen, I appreciate you letting me sit in with you. I've enjoyed having you here, and uh, we'll be uh, broadcasting, and we'll put our broadcast schedule up on our Facebook page. We'll be here Thursday night, four really good games, but uh, 
each and every one of you guys, uh, if you're driving home to your after a game or whatever, be safe, and we'll see you Thursday night right here on the Twin Lakes Sports Network.